This meeting here. Good morning. This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, uh, gentlemen, and uh, this is our PK Bible study for Saturday morning uh, Zoom group. Welcome everybody online now and those that might watch it back in the future. We're studying out of a series of books called Promise Builders. This title, this uh, book is The Character Under Construction. And um, we'll be in this just for, uh, I think after this week, a couple more weeks. Uh, <clears throat> so the title of our study today is called Table Talk and it's focusing on home life is expressed in our ministry. And the issue, issue under construction today is serving. Um, <clears throat> I'm thankful that all you guys are servant leaders here on this call. And uh, they were all striving for that because that was Jesus' example to us. Could I ask somebody to pray us in this morning? Father God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for the brothers who are here. And I pray for the brothers that aren't. I ask, Lord, that you uh, open the eyes of our heart and guide us uh, during this study. Uh, may your word be glorified and only your word be heard. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Uh, so as we normally do, I'll read the warm up here. And uh, the scripture uh, passage for this week is in two sections. So uh, the first is Acts 6, uh, verses 1 through 7. And so if somebody could be ready to read that, and then if someone else might be ready to read uh, Acts chapter 21, uh, verses 8 and 9. Uh, we'll get to that in a few minutes, so we have time to look that up. But first, we'll talk about um, the fact that all of us have had the occasion to be in someone's home for dinner, a holiday party, or some kind of social event. Often when we leave such an, such an occasion, we say to one another, wasn't it wonderful to be in their home? What is, um, what was it in the home, in a home like that, that might make you um, have such a good time? It's usually like the fellowship, like the conversation, like the home is welcoming. You know, you're engaged with people there. It's not like you feel like you're an outsider off to the side or anything like that. Maybe they have pumpkin spice smell or something in their house. It smells like Christmas cookies. Is that your favorite? <laughs> pumpkin spice? It's that time no, of year. It's that, it's that time of season. So everything that we have in the house is pumpkin spice. Oh, that is a good one. Welcoming uh, smell and to me taste. A little, I can taste a little more. I can smell it, but that's great. Anybody else have any like welcoming or warming minis um, memories uh, when they were in someone else's home or somewhere that you had a good time? Reminds you of having such a good time. I think it's just the feeling a lot of times of the hospitality and the service while you're there. You know, a lot of times you don't have to do anything except go get grab you a plate and put some knickknacks on it. And uh, just the, like you say, the fellowship and, and service. Communion, being together. Yeah, that's... Uh... Those are all certainly great things and you know it's always it's always um so awesome to feel welcomed and warm and uh, when when people are uh, serving you it's um it's a really good feeling that somebody loves you and that's one of the five love languages so maybe others uh you know they may say you know they may be expressing all of those love languages that you know and you feel yours in there and so you feel welcome um they may just say hey it's good to see you as, as i'm glad to see all you guys here this morning um and uh, so you get some words of affirmation or uh you know i i'm a hugger so i like 
I walk into somebody's house, I usually give them a hug or they, uh, if they know me, they'll probably reach out to me first. <laughs> um, yeah. All is good. Well, that you've even um, been invited, that you've even been invited into their home. Oh, uh, yeah. As a warm <laughs> and welcoming yeah. thing, you know, just they've taken the time to invite you. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I told you guys, um, my mom is moving from California to, um, well, she's moving in with, she's moving to my brothers for right now. And uh, so I think we're, she's going to live with us in Maryland for part of the year and with him part of the year until we figure out where, um, where she wants to live. So as long as she can be uh, independent, um, but um She's she's just been in in, in California for so long. Uh, it's just been hard to get her to move. But um, family that she's been taking care of their son, their uh, special needs son for twenty six years or so, uh, just moved to Tennessee. So um, uh, her best friend, her other best friend in uh, California, there is just turning like ninety two and not able to. Uh, get out of the house much so it's really hard to uh, to spend the time with her but anyway um all that being said we were my brother and I were trying to arrange a time when we could uh get my mom from his house to our house in Maryland and uh, we were talking about you know meeting or having Thanksgiving in Ohio so we're about halfway and then we'd meet them halfway in between and come to find out uh, I never invited him to any kind of Thanksgiving dinner at our house or in Ohio or anywhere else. And I was like, and anyone who brought that up, I was like, Oh, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, you, sometimes you just, uh, um, take things for granted that, you know, your, your family and friends always feel welcome. And, you know, if you haven't, you know, we haven't spent a lot of Thanksgivings together. So uh, I think he was waiting, he and his wife were waiting on an invitation. And um, so, um, I don't know, that caused a little bit of, of issue and miscommunication for a couple of weeks there, a week or so there. Um, but people want to feel welcome in, in your home and around you. And, uh, and I think, you know, today's issue under construction uh, tells us that, you know, one of those best, better ways to uh, make people feel welcome is serving them. So with that, I will, let me read the background on the scripture lesson for today, and then hopefully you guys will be ready to share the scripture with us and we'll get into the questions. As the early church grew, so did the need to take care of increasingly diverse group of people. In particular, the Hellenistic or Greek widows raised a complaint against the largely Jewish leadership. To address this problem, the 12 apostles wisely selected seven Greek men to fill this need. In our study, uh, we're gonna, we'll discover how the whole life of one of these men was expressed in his ministry. So somebody would start us off with by reading Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, uh, we would appreciate it. At this time, while the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint arose on the part of the Hellenistic Jews against the native Hebrews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. So the twelve summoned the congregation of disciples and said, it is not desirable for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve tables. Brethren, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we put in charge of this task. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. Uh, where do you want me to end that? Seven. seven. Through seven, please. Uh, the statement found approval with the whole congregation, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Arminus, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. 
And these they brought before the apostles, and after praying, they laid their hands on them. The word of God kept spreading, and the number of disciples continued in, to increase greatly in Jerusalem, and the great many of the priests were becoming obedient to the faith. Thank you. Uh, somebody have Acts 21? Yeah, I've got it. On the next day, we left and came to Caesarea, and entering the house of Philip, the evangelist, who was one of the seven, we stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who were prophetesses. Okay, well, thank you. Thanks for the reading of God's word, and praise be to God. So the issue at hand for the leadership in Jerusalem was a simple one, serving meals to the Greek widows. Why should there be such... such <laughs> easy for me to say. Why should there be such high standards uh, required for such a simple job? <clears throat> so that the, uh, the word of God is on those who are looking for uh, any kind of issue to uh, present before outsiders. Okay, yep. Well, you're breaking up a little bit there. I don't know if it's my connection or yours. It's probably mine. I'm on my phone. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you want these high standards of serving others and being, I think you said, being representative of the apostles and of the church in this case, the new church. Yeah. Because it, it, it's a... Uh... There, there's a, a verse, uh, I think it's one of the um, prophets, and God says, uh, my name has been blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. And so to preclude that, folks are in a public ministry who have a good name among the outsiders also so that God's name be blasphemed among the Gentiles because of them. Okay. I think it's also part of our requirement because there was two classes of people that were explicitly called out that we should care for, and it was widows and orphans. Right. And if we're not doing the simple task of serving meals to the widows, like, there's no way we're going to part the Red Sea. There's no way that we're moving mountains, like, and all that big stuff. Yeah. God wants, to, wants us to serve everyone around us well, but certainly those that are less fortunate than us, those that are mm -hmm. um, living alone in the world. Yeah, and also, uh, some, some of the backstory on this, too, uh, these Greek widows weren't actually what do you call um, native to that area. Uh, the Greek Jews had kind of moved into this area. So that's where part of the contention started was a, a perception that the, the Greek uh, widows, because there were plenty of Hebrew widows there that were obviously being served, but the, uh, the Greek widows, they, they didn't think they were getting enough. Mm -hmm. Maybe like kind of I'm an outsider, so you're not, you know, you're not paying as much attention to, to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so other reasons for um, for such high standards. Um, whoever's going to do this is representing God, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, we want to represent well, as John said. If we could have visited the homes of Philip and his six colleagues prior to being selected to such honorable positions, what would we have observed? What do you think we would have observed? Man, my mouth just isn't working today. <laughs> well, that these people were chosen because they produced a an open family and, and uh, a very warm setting for all people. 
and that they were ready to invite people to their home or that they were invite they were ready to perform you know these these tasks and we wanted to make sure that they were anyone we wanted to make sure that they were they were prepared to be that that kind of a warm environment I think these guys were already exemplifying the traits that were required to to handle this. <laughs> kind of like most of the time whenever a church selects uh, deacons, it's not, hey, I'm going to select Jonathan Smith and then we're going to train him to be a deacon. It's because they see something that, you know, someone's already serving. They've already got a spirit of hospitality and that type of stuff. And then they just simply throw a title on top of that. I think that if you were to look at uh, the requirements for first years and deacons in First Timothy three, um, it's probably already. In that. Yep. So. Uh, I agree. I think it was a simple selection. I'm sure it didn't take longer than a couple of days, where it's like, hey, I, I know this guy. Like, I know exactly who needs to be on this list. Right. Well, when we look at our uh, verses. Um, there in the second part, uh, Philip had four daughters that were prophetesses. So, you know, this, that, I'm sure they picked households that like, like Jonathan was alluding to there, that, that they already knew the household was together. Yeah. Yeah. So if we had gone into those houses, we would have already, we would have seen what their home life was like, right? And that's what we've been discussing um, previous studies, we've talked about that character that it takes to, um, or that needs to be built in one before they can be considered to be an elder, as John said. Um, so, so yeah, you would, you know, and, and a lot of what we're we've been talking about these past ten weeks or so is how the home life, the you know what you do in your home life is sort of more real than maybe the, you know, the uh, outside. Mm -hmm version of yourself or the uh, version the Instagram of photo like the Instagram photo is a highlight reel like that's not real life <laughs> yeah that's what I was trying to say thanks that's much much I, I just much wanted better. to drop one more comment on our first question there then where you were asking why there was such high standards there's a verse that that we can allude to there where it says when you have done this to the least of these my brethren you've done it also unto me so that mm -hmm. you know it's <laughs> You got to do it equally across the board, right? Mm, yeah. Yes. And make sure that all are well welcome. <laughs> you know, right. all groups of people are welcome. And and on this particular question, if we look at it, um, two of the two of the men that they selected, we hear about more in the scriptures. We don't hear so much about the other five, but Stephen and Philip, we hear later on, and and you know when you. When you know the fact already that Stephen is the first martyr for the church, then that they obviously were being led. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just, I don't know, the Holy Spirit took me down the gifts of the Holy Spirit thing, because I guess maybe me and Jonathan were talking about it in our uh, phone call the other night. But when we started talking about the gifts, I'm like, look at this, this uh, particular passage that we're studying here. Um, these men are actually being set apart to do a different job. And that is actually one of the first uh, mentions where specific jobs in the church were being formed. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff in the scripture that church was early. They're trying to do what's right. They didn't have quite enough, the right guidance. So people complained and now they say, Oh, maybe we need an organization. Yeah. <laughs> And I think this also, you know, just to chase a quick rabbit trail, this also lays out foundations for pastors, that the pastor mm -hmm. is not supposed to take on every task. <laughs> They're not supposed to oversee everything in the church. Amen. They, they are supposed to devote themselves to prayer and teaching of God's word. And they need to be good at delegating tasks to people like Stephen in the church and them do their jobs. Uh, there's a passage about uh, equipping the saints for ministry. Yeah. 
Yep. A lot of people think ministry, they think of uh, pastor. Paid staff. That's what they do. Yeah, it's that's clearly a... not the intent of the word. It's equipping saints for the ministry. Ministry belongs to the saints. The preaching of the word and prayer belongs to the oversight, uh, the elder, the uh, pastor. Hmm. A lot of people want to go to church they come for an hour long ago, giving a little tip. Yeah, hey, John, you're John, you're breaking up quite a bit. Try if you can speak a little. I don't know how loud you're speaking, but maybe you just need to break to the, the, yeah. the noise cancellation. You might have to cut off your video and see if that <laughs> helps too. Yeah, but well, yeah, we we caught, I think, enough of that to to yeah. understand where you're going with that. Is um, yeah. Uh, Is that better? My thought, my thought on what you, what I heard you saying was that um, you know a lot of a lot of things that people see wrong in our churches are going wrong, why they may not want to be there is because it just seems like it's a lot of people going to be fed, and you know why do those Christians need to be fed so much, right? Um, versus serving one another, uh, we're all called to serve to be servant leaders either in our homes and. Uh, and if you're going to church, you ought to be thinking about how you can serve others in your church because um, God doesn't call us to go and sit in the pews on Sunday. He calls us to serve and to love one another. And, um, you know, just feeding these Greek widows is one way to love other people. So um, Salt doesn't do, do our part. It stays in the shaker. Yeah. That is much, much clearer, John. Thank okay, you. Cool. Yeah. I, I, sorry, I just, you know, I'm like 18 inches from the phone. I thought you guys could pick me up easily, but obviously not. So back to the headset. <laughs> well, thank you. And do you think, do you think that there's also a part of this that while preaching and teaching is good, is it the interpersonal relationships that we have through serving others? Is that a better opportunity for us to speak the gospel into someone's life? Absolutely. Where, I mean, because the pastor, while he's up there teaching, he's not sitting there saying, oh, I noticed this person looks down and out. Let me ask him a question or anything like that. But if you're serving someone and you're like, hey, how's everything going? And they're like, ah, oh, not real good. It gives you an opening to sit down and develop a relationship. See, he's doing it as a generalization over everybody. And here we are to do it as a, a little community. Mm -hmm. that way there we can actually get to know and fellowship with each other more so and even if we have some that really don't know the word we can help put the seeds in there and get them to grow further yeah. that's Absolutely. a whole concept of the small groups you know i mean jesus had his small group and he you yeah. know said it was good for us to do that too so in this i like yeah. this small group you know we get together and we strengthen each other and same thing there when you're in service of others like you said tom you see um even when even when folks don't want to admit it to you you can you know a brother's countenance if you've been yeah. around him for quite a bit and he said oh no i'm good everything's fine I, yeah right come on dude <laughs> tell me what come the on, let's be real and i guess that's part of it is you can't be real in a church of 300 right and like we see with jesus you know he feeds five thousand but only 500 actually walk with him, but then he's only close with 12. Mm -hmm. But then when things go bad, there's only one at the cross. Yep. And it's some of that where, you know, in church, we're not talking about the struggles we have in our small group. We might open up, but it's different. If like Carl and I are talking one-on-one, -on -one, it's a no holds bar. Like I'm not asking questions and, he better not lie. That's right. Like, I'm going to ask him, like, have you zipped the lip? Or have you been mouthy? Right. Stuff like that. And, I mean, it's that more intimate relationship that I really think that we're able to pour into and water and help grow. Absolutely. You know, yeah, I think, I, I, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Go ahead. I'll say I'm working on a couple guys right now that just uh, started in the app. 
and I'm talking to them actually privately, trying to get them more fed. And some of them did some far, you know, far enough walk that I'm trying to pull them straight and mentor to them. So I know exactly what you're saying there. Yeah. Everybody needs a, uh, a uh, either needs or needs to be a uh, Timothy, Paul, or Barnabas. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Someone overseeing you, someone, you overseeing someone else and, and passing it down. Um, you know, it's like I, I, I only go to uh, I only go home once a month. And so when I get home, it's usually on a Sunday night. So I've missed church during the day. But there's a Monday night um, uh, home fellowship that I go to from church. And it's a pretty intimate affair. It's about five to ten people that show up on any given Monday night. And um, the, the guy who hosts it is just, I mean, he's an amazingly godly guy and talented. He, he knows the word. He can, he can play guitar. Yeah, I mean, he's just amazing. But he also knows how to draw things out of people. Mm. You know, it's just, it's a gift. And so people who come there know that they're going to be uh, ministered to one another because there's, just like here, there's interaction among the brothers and sisters. Um, nobody gets, you know, looked down on. You know, it's not like when you were in school and you gave the wrong answer in class and everybody laughs at you. You know, none of that. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a good, uh, intimate, uh, iron sharpening iron time. And, uh, and, and like I said, it's just, he, he's got, he, he's just, he's manifested a lot of the really great gifts that, you know, um, uh, are f right on in, in this topic that we're talking about today. I know all you guys realize that we're all expected to have a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So why wouldn't we need to have that kind of relationship with everyone in the church mm -hmm. and everyone that Absolutely. we that we come in contact with? I mean that kind of personal relationship is expected of us. Absolutely. Yeah, as we've been talking about, you know, not forgetting anyone, um, like in the case of these Greek widows. So, yeah. And it's just like what James says, you know, you, you shouldn't uh, judge among the brethren. If, uh, if a rich guy comes in with uh, fine clothing and you say, oh, here's a good seat for you here. And then some poor guy comes in here, here, sit at my feet, you know. <laughs> that's yeah. kind of that's a, that's the kind of thing that uh, you know is explicitly condemned, and mm -hmm. uh, it's it's probably a manifest uh, the the same kind of manifestations happening here among the Hellenistic versus uh, uh, Hebrew uh, uh, yeah. widows. Question here: <clears throat> was, Yes, sir. Wasn't the widows in that day and age? They were pretty. Uh, not real well off because they didn't have a man yep. over them in that time. And yep. time. That's it. No, yeah, absolutely. Because they didn't have a means. If there wasn't a man to provide, it was really hard for a woman to take care of herself and take care of her family. And they looked really, they were uh, looked down upon, on, weren't they? Yes. Yeah. Well, wasn't it also besides uh, the man, wasn't they supposed to go to like their family? And if they didn't have any family, that's where the community stepped in and helped out more so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, uh, that's uh, another thing Paul said was uh, about widows. Um, you know, um, if if the widow has a family, then the family should take care of the widow, because if they don't take care of their own family, they're worse than an unbeliever. Yeah. But if there's a widow indeed who's you know uh, over a certain age and has nobody else, they're relying on God for their sustenance. Then that's when the church should step in and take care of that widow. Okay. Well, um, so the, the, our third question is: um, at some time later, Paul the apostle and his traveling companions. They made sure that their itinerary included a stop in Caesarea. Why was that? Uh, 
see if what they had planted, well, the stuff that had been planted back at the beginning to see what it was like now, see how it had grown. There was also a huge character building moment that took place here. You'd have to actually read on through the end of the section there up through verse 14. Um, but there was a prophet came to them and took uh, Paul's belt and bound himself with it and said, you know, the man that wears his belt would be delivered into the hand of the Gentiles. So Paul's like, you know what? I, I am in service for God and I know where I'm going that they may take my life, but I'm, you know, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm bound to do. Um, so it was also um, strengthening there, leaving another huge seed in that area saying, okay, yeah, we're, we're in service to our Lord. And if it means that they're going to take my life, so be it. That's, that's just the way it is. And do you think it could also be that it was some way of repaying, paying respect to Stephen and everything back at that time? Because right after we do the, uh, you know, the deacons, the seven that are chosen to serve, Stephen later gets accused of blasphemy. I mean, right. just sentences later. And then he actually does the address and then he winds up getting killed not even two pages later right and everything and do you, maybe that played some into it as well where paul is going back to the grassroots of all of the jesus movement at that time now that he sees it from a different perspective right yeah absolutely Yeah, he's going. I think he's going to all the, all those places in Caesarea in this case, um, just to to show them respect, to say, "Hey, I've heard you got, you're all doing a very good job," and be able to admonish those where he needed to as well, right, and and help them to do better, to improve. All right, so the children in Philip's home were apparently a, attracted to serving the Lord. What have you seen and learned that encourages this kind of response among children? They'll see in you do it. Mm -hmm. you, exactly. Your actions of actually mm -hmm. praying and reading your Bible. And when things get hard, you don't lose hope because that's our hope is not found in anything in this world and stuff like that and the consistency in doing so speaks volumes into our children yep. and to be open and honest because like whenever i mess up i'm like i'm sorry that's not who i want to be that's not how i want to be please forgive me yeah i have a 13 year old granddaughter who was with her mother in a store just uh, yesterday or day before, Kim was telling me that, and as they went through the store, they were, you know, looking at this, looking at that. And then when they decided to leave, they started to leave. And um, Kim's daughter noticed that her granddaughter kept kind of like looking, you know, kind of over her shoulder and stuff like that. And um, her mother had already realized it as well, but when they, and she didn't say anything, but when they got in the car, uh, she just asked her, she's like, Bella, why, why did you keep looking over your shoulder? And she said, because I could, that man, she said, that man, there was something about that man. And um, it's that was called the, the discernment of the Holy Spirit. There was something about the man that was close to them when they were leaving out that Bella's sweetheart felt was wrong. And she was drawn to look. And the weird thing was, was or not the weird thing, but the, the gracious of God thing was that her mother already had that same feeling, but didn't want to mention it to her um, to, to scare her or anything like that. Um, so just an example that when those things are already implanted by the parents and in the home, that discernment of the Holy Spirit is, is given to the children as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. 
thanks for sharing that. That, yeah. Like in our society is so against men and so against what we stand for in Christ. And at every turn in the road, they try to belittle our role in this world. And it's only whenever we get on our face and we start walking with Christ that this world's ever going to see any type of revival. Because it's not going to start with kids. It's not going to start with our wives. Mm -hmm. Like, not at all. It's going to start with us as men. <clears throat> Yeah, that's Listen why that's why I do men's ministry, or we focus on men, is because I do believe that uh, the church won't change until the men in the culture begin to change. Yeah, listen to Tony Evans, uh, Kingdom Man, his broken man. Listen to his little thing there, and that tells you the whole story. <laughs> well, it's like I pulled it up off of a YouTube posted on Facebook, Jonathan Evans from when he was at the uh, event in Dallas. Yeah, I pulled man. that on there to try to get. Yeah, to try yeah. to get the guys the to men? step up. And I'm going to continue to post it to try to get the guys to engage. Those are some powerful messages, you know. I mean, Satan knew if he could get the head of a household, he could take the whole family down. And yep. that's why it's <clears throat> a responsibility. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But I, you know, and I, I um, you know, I, I agreed with uh, the Tony and Jonathan Evans comments and, and so forth. Um, there is another guy out there. Um, he's a Jewish um, messianic rabbi, um, uh, Jonathan Kahn, yes. and he had he had said something about um, that the real goal of Satan was to get to the children, and so he attacked men first. And now he's attacking the women because now even a man can be a woman. So you're eliminating the role of the women by men supplanting that and competing in men's sports or women's sports as a man, even though they you know, dress up as a woman or whatever. And the, like I said, uh, he, he had mentioned that the ultimate goal was the children. If he can get to the children, then he can do whatever he wants. And so it, just in the last two years, we've watched this thing that it was unheard of just a few years ago, and now you've got kids wanting gender aff affirmation and transgender surgeries at, you know, like 12 and 13 years old, and people are applauding it, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we, can, we can go right back to the absence of a godly man, not only in the home, but in the, the city, the county, the state, and, and the nation. Yeah. And it's just, I like, I, I to, I, my first Promise Keeper event was uh, at the LA Coliseum, and Tony Evans was there. And he did the, if you're a messed up man in a messed up neighborhood, and it, da 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 da, you know, it, and I mean, we, he had us rolling with the humor of it, but the message, it's essential ingredient hit some yeah. hit home so hard through that humor. And, you know, he, he's just a gifted speaker. He really is. But, um, but he had, he had a truth that if in 96, I had applied to my life, I would not be divorced today. Hmm. That's powerful, man. Thanks for sharing that. Yes. Yeah. But see, like what's your security? My number, or the vulnerable spot for that is the children and the women. We must protect the children first, because if anybody comes in, that's where they're going to hit is our most vulnerable place. Exactly. So that's why we have to protect that, and then from there we can protect everything else. And it's also because that's the you know the key to the future generations as yep. well. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. So I think I, you know, what I've heard you guys say here, and what I believe is that the, the children have to see the service, the love um, to them, right? They have to, they need to feel loved, and they need to feel served. And so, um, yeah, I think it's, I think we all agree, it's up to the man, uh, the father in the home, to be able to do that. And a lot of our homes are are not whole 
because the father is, so, is absent for various reasons. Um, so in our hard hat area today, it says the best way to teach character is to have it around the house. I think it's what we were just, just saying, talking about. So as we uh, wrap up for today and um, begin our attitude of prayer and going, taking our, our uh, thoughts to the Lord um, in prayer, the, war, the wrap up is uh, that Philip the evangelist began as a table server. Um, what kind of table serving opportunities is the Lord giving you right now, giving each of us? I think mine is whenever it's serving my family in the form of, you know, I work all day, I get up at five, go to work, and but when I come home, I'm the one that cooks dinner. And even though I'm, I mean, there's types of food that I enjoy cooking, but overall it's just kind of meh. But I understand that that's an opportunity where I can have food prepared so that when my wife gets home at six, she doesn't have to worry about it. And so I think that's one of the ways that, you know, I just lead by example. It's not anything I get super excited about unless I'm cooking steak or shrimp or scallops. <laughs> Something like that. Bacon. Yeah, bacon. All wrapped with bacon. Yes. All, wrapped. All wrapped with bacon. Yeah. Everything's better but with bacon, right, John? I think it's sometimes it's in the menial task of helping out on the day-to-day -day stuff and not thinking that, you know, for those that have little still, thinking that me spending time with my daughter is me having to babysit, like, I don't know what that is, but I mean, where a lot of guys are like, yeah, my wife's out of town, so I'm babysitting the kids. No, they're, they're your kids. You're being right. a dad with your kids. This isn't like it's a job of babysitting. Right. Yeah, so they one, will feel that too, right? They'll yeah. feel that attitude. Oh, absolutely, they will. Um, well, one thing that's uh, for me right now is just like I said, I'm going to um, uh, training session that everyone knows so that everyone will know when the day comes when the weekend comes what their specific job tasks are for this crossroads experience uh, some of you have been through either uh, something similar to it the uh, road to Emmaus or there's a couple other um, adventures like this uh, but to me you know when I went as a traveler uh, that was one thing that was very impressionable to me was that I wasn't allowed to do anything except listen and eat, you know, uh, <laughs> it's pretty Just much the way it was. the Holy Spirit, right? Right. The and then the Holy Spirit. And that was only, that was only the, that was only, may I say a third of the experience. The, the other two thirds of the experience was when I went back the next time to, to, to serve and to work. Yeah. And I've been doing it now for five years, twice a year. And there's nothing like it, man, to go in there and, and to, to give God's love to these new men coming in as travelers, some of which don't know God, some who do know God, but maybe are distant from him. And sometimes you even get one that's just full of the Holy Spirit and he wants to have the experience, right? Um, so, but, but going in there and, and being tired all weekend because the days are long and, um it, it's humbling i i was making one of the hundred cup pots of coffee one morning at 4 30 to make sure it was ready and warm for everybody when they got up and i had a holy spirit experience right then and i was on my knees in front of that pot of coffee <laughs> no other place that you can do stuff like that that the holy spirit could say you know what look what you're doing you're making coffee you're making coffee for all these men that like coffee. But but what you're really doing is you're serving me and you're glorifying mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Okay. So that's awesome. Yeah. And you guys, I know, uh, Jonathan and Tom, I know you guys go out and do other stuff. There's all kind of ways that we can serve if we just open our eyes to them. Yeah. You know, uh, you were talking about the, you know, eating and, and, and listening. You know, I went to an Emmaus walk and, uh, you know, they're, they're, um, they're 
tagline is De Coloris, which is the, yes. the colors of the colors, right? And uh, somebody at the end of the weekend said, I don't know why you say De Coloris. You should say De Calories because that's all I consume this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the food was really good. The calories were non-existent, though. I could, you could eat all weekend on one of those trips and not gain any weight. <laughs> it seemed like back Ready then. You're dying out the window for that weekend. <laughs> yeah. they take, spiritual God takes spiritual all the calories uh, retreat calories don't count. <laughs> That's funny. I think it's one of those things, too, where when we serve in whatever capacity it is, it makes the service more intimate and more enjoyable, enjoyable whenever we don't get recognized Amen. by human people because we know that that's a reward in heaven. Like we're either going to be rewarded on earth or in heaven. And we know that everything on earth is going to pass away. So I want all my rewards stored up in heaven. Amen, brother. Yeah. My father who is in secret will see what you've done in secret. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, I had the opportunity. Um, we're in Ohio right now, and um, my daughter's dance uh, team you know, is performing at the football game today. And so my wife is in charge of the tailgate for the dancers and the twirlers. And um, so I, my opportunity is to serve my daughter in that and what she's doing and honor her and, and also to serve my wife. And um, my daughter was able to come home yesterday or come to her grandmother's yesterday where we're staying. And she's like, dad, I just want, I just need my, I just need you to trim my toenails. <laughs> it's like, and, and I don't know why I seem to be the only one that does it, but I love to do it because I could, if it helps her um, and, <laughs> She's got an issue with um, having ingrown toenails anyway, because I think, you know, she wears these these tight shoes that that do that. But anyway, um, that was just a great opportunity to do that. I look forward to the rest of today being able to serve in that way. And I'll get to enjoy some football out of it, too. All right. Well, I enjoy the serving part. (laughs) Not saying I don't, because I do uh, meet a lot of new people today. Uh, as a freshman, there's a lot of freshmen, uh, new new dancers on the team. So looking forward to that. Anybody else have any see any opportunities or have had some opportunities recently? I mean, anytime in, in my case, family. Oh, go I was just going to say, anytime our extended family gets together, my wife's family, my family, and others, um, I tend to be one of them that always is hanging around the kitchen. I don't know why, but I tend to be a service guy that, that tends to prepare food or take care of the dishes and things afterwards to clean up. And it just seems natural to me. And, uh, but my family always seems to notice it later. You know, I mean, you don't notice it when it's happening, but you know, they, they always kind of look at it and say, well, Bill, we knew we were going to catch you somewhere near the kitchen, somewhere near the dishes or the food and getting things prepared or getting things cleaned up. And I said, yep, you, you're right. I'm here. <laughs> you caught me. I'm in the kitchen doing something. So, you know, it's kind of a natural thing for me and they, they appreciate it, but you know, it's, it's so natural that it just happens. You know, I just end up there, you know? And uh, so I think it's one of the things that God's called me to do, be, a, be of service. Amen. Amen. Be of service. Well, it's like Pastor Art always brings up about being a foot washer. And we're supposed to wash each other's feet all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's our, our way of service. And that's how we're supposed to do it. Right. Yeah. And like we were saying earlier, everybody around you has different love languages. And so be able to find those or make people feel welcome and make people feel served, uh, feel like they're um, feeling God, right? Because God is love. And um, so, yeah, John, did you have something? I was just going to say, uh, you know, I uh, get a trainee uh, usually once a month 
And um, so in, in that case, not only am I uh, helping them launch their career or whatever, but uh, you know, while we're together, uh, I'll look for opportunities to, to do something to show them the love of Christ. And, uh, and so um, you know, I, I, I've got a captive audience for about three weeks, generally. Uh, so uh, I try you haven't to had anybody them. jump out of the truck, have you? <laughs> no, but I nearly have a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not like they can just get up and leave, you know, when they're driving, you know, right. 65 yeah, down the freeway. Yep. I mean, I'm bald because I've pulled my hair out by the roots sometimes. You know? <laughs> Tim or Scott, you guys have any opportunities you see you want to share? Nah, I'm just kind of in the background today, enjoying the conversation and the fellowship. So you're welcome to do that. Thanks for being hey, here. Uh, hey, John, about the training in of people, the worst thing I have is when the guy's backing up and I can't see where, he, where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I, when I do that, I, I'm outside because I've I, I've had okay. too many close calls, so I just... From now on, I'm outside and I'm directing them the first week. And then the second week, I see how they do on their own. And I said, but always watch me because I may tell you to stop. And then the third week, I'm like, I'm just the passenger. You do it. Yeah. <laughs> but back to the serving. Um, uh, you know, I'm uh, 45 years of being married and my I. I they don't think I do enough. And uh, my wife brings this up to me that she's never had to work full time. That for me, working has always given her the opportunity to uh, be in the women's groups, be uh, the full time, just about full time mom to our five children. And, that way there i think that's that's what i've served a, a lot and but i don't recognize it like right. that you know, it says that we're supposed to die treat our wives like christ uh, mm -hmm. treats the church and i don't see myself as not even being close to doing that but giving her the oppor opportunity to do those things that's on her heart has blessed me also. Amen. Well, over 45 years, you must be doing something right. right? <laughs> that's Amen. a good, that's yeah. a that's testament amazing. of itself. We're dinosaurs in this day and age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, it's, uh, I'm going to take some time to um, listen to what God is telling us in the study today um, to thank him for what he's doing in our lives and uh, also to remember what he's uh well, the prayers that he's answered and uh, to, to pray for one another uh, the response as a promise keeper <clears throat> for this study is that i will attach new meaning to being a servant at home number one and number two that i will i will see my workplace service as an extension of my home life so with those thoughts, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and um, let's see who he leads to pray to, to close us out today. Father, as always, I thank you for these men that are gathered here. Lord, it's such a, a wonderful, refreshing thing to wake up on a Saturday morning and, and have this be the first thing to kick off my weekend. Father, I thank you for the love that we share here. I thank you for the brotherhood and the companionships and that, have been, that are being made and strengthened. And Lord, I just thank you for the guidance that we get here through these lessons. I thank you for our brother James being diligent and mm -hmm. always being there and uh, giving us our material during the week. And just thank you for the way the Holy Spirit works through him. And Father, as we go through this week, we just ask that you... Uh, open our hearts and minds to the way that we can be in service of others, Lord, and, and to be able to honor you and praise you and all the things that we do. And 
let others be able to, to see you through us, Father. We ask for safety for all of our families and, our, and those around us, Lord, just to protect their hearts, Father, and guide them closer to you each and every day. Thank you for all the men that are here and all the men that will watch later, some of them that we don't even know until we get that message in the background, Father, that says, hey, uh, I really enjoyed that. We just thank you that the Holy Spirit can touch others uh, lifetime and in the future like this through these messages. Father, go with us and, and just let us always give you all praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord God, just help our, our service to begin at home. Father, let it start with us. Let it start with you transforming our heart, our mind, our thoughts, our attitude. Help all that to align with your word and that through our actions, Father, that we serve our family. Lord God, just help us to be a light in the darkness. Not to blend in with the world around us, but to stand out. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Heavenly Father, Abba, Lord, we rejoice in this day. Uh, the sunshine and where I am and um, Lord we just we look around us and see all of your creation and how you're serving us even today and how you've taught us to serve in your word Lord I just pray that we each can be your servants um, as we go throughout this week Lord and um make those around us feel welcome, feel loved, and to see you, Lord, as we um, have the opportunities to be the salt in this world, the flavoring that people can see your goodness, your, your kindness, uh, your love and joy and patience and all those fruits of the Spirit, Lord, that, um, that you uh, instill in us and that uh, your love and being close to you brings out in us. And Lord, I just pray that we can uh, well serve those around us uh, so that we are serving you well, Lord, as well. <clears throat> so Lord, I pray for those brothers uh, that join us sometimes here or, or uh, afterwards on, online, uh, see the message and we'll make a reply or a, a comment and we just thank you for those opportunities as well, Lord. And um, as we go throughout our week uh, this week, again, Lord, help us to remember our, our leaders, our national leaders, our pastors, leaders in the church, Lord, who are doing all they can to serve us. And uh, as we pray for them, Lord, that you will guide them and help them make better decisions, help them to have the energy that they need to uh, encourage those around them uh, to, uh, to, to be willing to feel your love as well as uh, when they're ready, Lord, that they would go out and serve others as well and knowing uh, that they're serving in your spirit, in your love. So Lord, I pray over uh, also the, the brothers here this morning and all the families associated with those of us that are uh, in this group or in other groups in our, our uh, application that are able to serve and pray for one another, Lord, throughout the week. And, uh, just help us to continue to have that heart, that, that warm heart, that heart for other people that we can uh, be also, Lord, the light of this world, uh, the light that represents what you want us to represent in this world and to uh, shine that light in the dark spaces that you bring us to, Lord, and whether that's in our own lives and the lives of our family or friends or those that we come across, Lord, just 
uh, the, the, the world, as you know, is, is full of chaos and darkness, and, uh, but you have come and you have overcome the world. You've overcome the darkness. And we thank you that your son came here to give us that example uh, of how to love one another and bring that light to this world so that uh, it has hope and the hope that uh, the, the knowledge that you're in control and the hope that um, that uh, makes this world a better place. So we ask all these things in the precious and holy name, in the majestic name of your son, Jesus, and our Christ. Amen. 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 Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, always keep all of us men tuned in to what you did. Dear Lord, you came to serve. You came to this earth to serve us instead of, be, instead of being served. He was a king. He was a king who came, dear Lord. But he came as a child. And he came to serve us while he was here. Keep us ever mindful of that. We pray this all in just in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Well, again, Lord, we we come to you as your humble servants and and ask you to bless each and every man here to carry us throughout this next week uh, yes. in love and in grace and in. Uh, your spirit filled with your Holy Spirit overflowing to those around us. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Hey, before everybody jumps off, let's talk about our next study because I know that um, last time we threw out some options of, and do have you had a chance, James, to talk to Tom about Seven Promises or Chris about Kingdom Man? Yeah, I've, I've brought it up to them. I've asked them to pray about it and let me know. Um, I actually, we also I think, have like we could do the Mighty Men of Prayer as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we could do that as well. And um, that's at least eight weeks in and of itself. I'm, I remember, did we do that here uh, and show the videos or once? Yeah. yeah, I think it's yeah. been. It was, it was one. Of it was right at the beginning. Yeah, it was like about 18 months ago or so. Because, uh, yeah, I believe it's been a while since we've seen those. Yeah, yeah. And um, that would be a great opportunity when we do that. Um, and there's a couple things that I think are, are important for us to, to do on a recurring basis. And that is the mighty men of prayer so that men have the opportunity to um, – be with other men in prayer and experience that and, and yeah. learn better, better how to pray. And also, um, you know, it's a great opportunity to invite other people uh, new to the group, whether it's just in the app or on Saturday mornings, or maybe another group needs to be started another day of the week or something like that. But seven promises is another one that, it, that I mm -hmm. think is, is important to do yeah. periodically um, yeah. so that, you know, we remember what those, all those issues in our lives that uh, promise keepers, you know, sort of builds their ministry around uh, those, those promises. And they're promises of God, but they're also issues in life. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. And uh, I don't have any answers for people yet. I've got, I think, three weeks of study. There's actually a Christmas study that I'm going to do whenever we, uh, as our last one here. Uh, it's in this book uh, on grace and truth. So um, we do have three left here. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I did talk to Chris also. He's he's praying about sort of the timing. And, and I think Tom is as well. The timing yeah. of when do we do these uh, various studies, whether it be kingdom man, men of prayer. Um, yeah. So how long have you guys all been meeting? Um, like October of two, uh, 2020. Is that right? That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, September, October of 2020. Okay. Because the PK app got started right after the online conference in August of 2020. Yeah, that's right. 
and James and Carl were the ones that really got it started first. Yep. I kept trying to get in there and I couldn't figure out the time frame because they're both two different coasts. So I'm in the middle and I'm trying to work <laughs> out around. <laughs> Yeah, I think they'd been meeting for two or three mm. weeks because I think it wound up being just Carl and James the first meeting, and then the second meeting, I think it was Carl, James, and Eric Abasa, our brother from Uganda. And then I think I came in the third or fourth meeting or so, something like that. When Chris Henning came in, or not Henning, but Chris uh, Henderson, Henderson came in, he didn't come in till the. I want to say it was the beginning of 2021 because he got saved um, at the conference, the online conference, and then he got baptized in 2021's conference. So, um, James, you were mentioning last time that you were going to be gone and that you needed help facilitating. Yeah, next week I'll probably need help. Um, I'm in Ohio. Um, for these next couple Saturdays, so uh, next next Saturday morning, I'll probably need. Um, yeah, that's the one I can't that. help with because I'll be at the uh, uh, conference with my beautiful bride. So that's a great opportunity in and of itself, right? So in the right place, um, I'm I'm sure somebody will will help next week. I'll be able to get started, but I may not be able to be. Uh, have full attention on it. I, it's kind of, I don't know the timing right now, but um, yeah. I appreciate you guys being ready and willing to, to do that. Also, I want to remind people of our upcoming virtual events, mm -hmm. Stand in the Gap 25th anniversary documentary video uh, is coming out on the 4th of October. And then the 25th of October is another virtual event um, focused on mental health and it's called carried and uh, it's just dealing with the issues of mental health which is uh, very timely in this part of the year i heard somebody yesterday preaching on the fact that it used to be that um, you know november and december and especially december were uh, some of the toughest months for for mental health issues and having to deal with depression and things like that but since covid it's more like um yeah. you know april may june july august september october november december january and february also <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> march as well so um yeah, yeah there's just so 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 the world needs a lot of hope and um and dealing with those issues uh, that's coming out on the yeah. 25th of october it'll also be run again in december uh, as well so the each of those has a 21 day challenge so invite guys to those things and um and to be a part of uh not only hopefully this group but any those other groups that are out there so god bless safe, you guys brother. yeah god bless uh god bless you. I'll, just, I'll say go and be the church we can continue talking if you want but please let's all remember to go and be the church amen amen i don't know let me I'll stop the recording. Will we, uh, anybody?